Watching this guy load luggage makes me so nervous for my computer. Oh. Jeez. Seven a.m. on August fourth, and time to go. I can't believe how hard it's been to get ready. And honestly, I didn't know if this day was ever going to come. Leaving on a journey like moving to Norway forces you to consider life's choices. Not just what to take and how do you get it there, but why we choose a particular path. The move has also got me thinking about the idea of home. What is it exactly? It's so heavy. In your lifetime, you're likely to have many different places you call home. But what makes a home? A feeling? Your stuff? Your community? And will Norway feel like home? When? <laughs> I love you. I love you. After a last goodbye with family, I'm going back for school again. Do it. The first stop is a COVID test. You can't board your flight without one. The results take an hour, so one more last. A last breakfast with Darcy. Usually never nervous about travel. You know, it's like, oh, I love, I love the adventure of problem solving, and, you know, just rolling with the punches. And this has been so daunting. Oh, the test results available. And it says pass, result negative. Oh, you sound surprised. No, it's pleasing. It's just one last thing to have to worry about. Getting from point A to point B with five bags is an ordeal. It's hard enough for the two of us, but I dread doing the rest of the trip alone. The total weight of my luggage and backpacks is nearly 200 pounds. There are two legs to this trip, a nine and a half hour flight to Amsterdam, followed by two and a half hours to Bergen. There are COVID screenings at most every juncture. I need a negative test to get on the flight and the same paperwork to get through passport control in Amsterdam and then entrance to Norway. And once in Norway, I need another COVID test before being shuttled to a quarantine hotel. But first, checking in for my flight with my luggage. Hello. Hi, how are you today? How are you? Did you already do paper those back? No, I have not. I have not because we weren't certain on the weight. And uh, this is the oversized one. Wow. Frank, to cut this to 50, I may have to take out underwear. Oh yeah! yeah. The gravity of a journey like this never leaves you. You can't help but be flooded by mixed feelings. There is excitement about all that is before you, anxiety about aligning all the moving parts, but most of all, the feeling of loss at leaving without my wife. So imagine, if you will, a really compelling montage full of lots of faces waiting to get on their airplane. Really all we can do is imagine it because I lost my GoPro and with it, all the footage. Anyway, carry on, let's get this plane in the air. Now Seattle fades into the distance. I settle in for nine hours of being wedged in my seat like a holiday ham in the back of the bus. The haze from Canadian forest fires cast an orange glow even at 39,000 feet. Summer travel this far north means you'll only have about 90 minutes of darkness. I can't sleep on a plane. No amount of shifting in my seat makes me comfortable. With the sun rising over the UK, 
at least I think that's UK, it's hard to tell with the clocks. Amsterdam draws closer. One oddly satisfying experience for me is watching the baggage handlers on the tarmac. Watching this guy load luggage makes me so nervous for my computer. Oh. Jeez. Okay, there goes bag one. Bag two. I can see the computer on the cart. And here's the computer. Ugh. Thank you for waiting. Back to the front row passengers to board the aircraft now. On behalf of KLM City Hopper and Skyty, we wish you a pleasant flight. Next up, Norway. These shots of boarding my flight are probably pretty similar to the missing footage on my lost camera. Honestly, all footage of getting on a plane and finding your seat looks pretty much the same. But it serves a purpose of transitioning to the flight to Norway. It's hard to sleep no matter how tired I am. I keep wondering if I'll make it through immigration. I'll need to present a slew of specific documents. Besides my passport, I need a residency permit, a letter of admittance from the University of Bergen, a negative COVID test taken within 24 hours of arriving in Norway, proof that I've registered my trip with immigration, and proof that I have somewhere to live. Each document comes from a different agency and you can only hope you've done it right. It's easy to imagine arriving at the airport only to have to turn around and go home because you're missing something. As the patchwork of Norway's coastal islands appear behind the clouds, you realize you're close really close to running a bureaucratic gauntlet. Bergen is a thousand-year-old town. The port has always been the community's heart, first with fishing, then with trade. It was once the capital of Norway, and today is the jumping-off point for countless tourists cruising the fjords. This area averages over 300 overcast days a year. So arriving with the sun brightens my outlook significantly. Welcome to Norway, welcome to Bergen Airport, ladies and gentlemen. The local time here it is five minutes past eleven in the morning, of course. Bye bye, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. It's easy to hope the next step after arrival is a walk to baggage claim, a brief sojourn in the duty free store, foraging for treats, and a trip to your hotel. But COVID has changed that equation significantly. It was an incredibly challenging process to get through the whole COVID protocols and getting through the testing. Over three hours from the time I touched down to the time I finally landed in my bed. I knew they'd take it seriously, but boy, some of these folks were pretty grumpy. It was just really tedious and a whole lot of folks trying to get tested at once. The first step is calling through those with approved digital vaccine passport and those from countries like the US where there is no centralized vaccine database. Vaccinated to the right, the unwashed Americans to the left. Think of it like the sorting hat at Hogwarts. Uh, I'm vaccinated, but... But I, yeah, I know yeah. they don't have the same system. Exactly, so that's where I'm... Go to the left, right? Uh, yeah, but have you registered yourself on the country? Yes. Yes, super, that's good. It was really interesting. No one assumes I'm actually a student because I'm the old guy. Literally, when I came in and presented my passport and documentation at immigration, she said, well, we need your marriage certificate, we need your wife's social security number and a Norwegian ID. I will be, um, I'm going to be a student. Okay, are you married to yeah. Yes. All right, do you have a marriage certificate? Thank you very much. Do you have a marriage? Uh... Uh, um... And I was like, what? Wait, no, this wasn't any of the documentation I needed. Oh gosh, you know, let me see if I can find it. And I'm scrambling around trying to find it and I'm texting Darcy, it's like 2.30 in the morning. Uh, Darcy, take a photo of the marriage license and uh, 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 I need your social security number. And after about 10 minutes, sleep deprived, trying to find this stuff, she went, oh, oh, you're a student. You have a letter here from uh, the university saying you've been accepted. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I thought you were married to a Norwegian woman and you were coming here and joining her. They separated the students from the other travelers and moved us in a group to testing. The facility is huge. It's set up in an unused terminal so folks can be isolated before gaining entry to Norway. After another round of paperwork where they connect your upcoming PCR test with your trip registration and your residency permit, it's time for your test. This would be my second one in 18 hours. How are you? Oh, thank you. Do you have any symptoms? No. no perfect. When's your birthday? February 14th, 1958. Excuse me. Are you filming? Uh, oh, it's, oh, it is on. Yeah. yeah, you cannot. At least he was nice about it. The test results were negative, and I could finally find out if my luggage was still on the carousel two hours after landing. Sometimes you guess wrong. I thought we were leaving to the right, and I set my camera up so I could grab it after we walked by. We were going yeah. to the left. Yeah, I guess. I don't know what Moving the camera to a new position, Mr. Grumpy Pants stopped me. Yeah, we, we don't know what about now. Well, that we had 20 minutes. I just want to go on the record as saying we moved 20 feet and then waited for 15 minutes for the rest of the group to get out of the duty-free shop. The journey to the quarantine hotel is via bus, where you practice your social distancing. They check you in one at a time, and I could finally drag my bags to my new home, my new home for the next seven days. Oh, not bad. I enough room for myself. I've been going for nearly 30 hours, and frankly, I was trashed. And I couldn't wait to take off this mask. 